al liboi bevoi bevoi el hakodesh. Whenever he came into the kodesh and uh, the kohen gadol, he had to always wear a chosin mishpat when he came into the oil mir. The zikaron of Hashem tomid. There should be a remembrance in front of the avister continuously. In other words, that he should literally r- remind Kaviyochu, uh, uh, as it were, Klape Heaven, the um, the names of the tribes of the Jewish people. Venosato, and then we find a new uh, command. Venosato el hakoisha el koishen amishpot es ha udim ve es ha tumim. But you have to put into the koishen mishpat, or you have to, I don't know if you have to put it in, or you have to place it upon, or do something, that it should enter the koishen mishpat. What? The udim es ha udim ve es ha tumim. Uh, whatever that may be, it means literally uh, the il- illuminating things and the purifying or, or um, uh, making simple or, or complete uh, things. Urim v'tumim. you and they must be also alayv arayn, and also since they're put into the face or they're put on or into or uh, as part of the Chosh and Mishpat, so they will also be on Aaron's heart, the royal of Hashem, when he will come ever in, in front, literally, of the Abish when he enters the oil. Moyed, but also Aaron as Mishpat, Bene Israel, and Aaron will carry to the judgment of the Jewish people, Ali Boy, Lifne Hashem Tomi. So he was seems like a doubling up of that concept that he will carry in front of him the uh, remembrance of the Yidden in the previous Basik, the remembrance of the Jewish people. And here he will carry the judgment literally of the Jewish people on his heart continuously whenever he enters the uh, the sanctuary, the Kohen Godel. He'll have in this question Mishpat, uh, he'll have these Urimba Batumim. Now, we notice that we, we haven't met up with these Urim Atumim before. We haven't heard about them before, up till now. And nonetheless, they're referred to as Nosata El Achoishan, El Achoishan Amishpat, Es Ha'urim Ve Es Ha'tumim. As if it was something that you you understand already what it is. Ha'urim, the Urim and the Tumim, almost as like to say to him, oh yes, you know what they are, and they were put into the into the question Ahamish Park. So, you know, in all modesty, uh, I would say that if I, unless I'm assisted in some way, I wouldn't know what these Urim Vatumim are. The truth is that even if I've been assisted, <laughs> it's going to be quite a task to understand exactly what they what they were. But anyway, they were placed in uh, to the uh, to the the uh, the question Ahamish Park, and they added in some way to the divine task of Aaron of mentioning and making known to the Abishta uh, the merit of the Jewish people but in a form of judgment of Mishpat. So Rashi has already told us earlier when he mentioned the first time we mentioned the word Choshen Mishpat at the beginning of the commandment to make the Choshen Mishpat. Rashi says over there that the word Mishpat it means a judgment, but a judgment means a clarification of inyani. So when you, yeah, you're in a confusion or you're not sure as to what should be the din and the judgment, but you get to a certain case or a certain uh, difference or a certain uh, uh, mis, uh, how do you call it, misdealings that somebody may have done, or, how do you call it, uh, an avira or something of that sort, and we clarify and we come to a conclusion, what is the, uh, the decision in this matter, then that's called a, a mishpat. In other words, that the inner of a mishpat has in itself that there's an in- unclarity, there's like a, a difference, almost what you might call a clash of possibilities, and mishpat tells me what is the, the clarification of that, of that confusion or that uncertainty. That's what Rajesh said originally. So we're going to 
she says something slightly different now that we come to, to this point. However, uh, these Uriyam Batumim, what are these uh, illuminating and purificating or uh, you know, simplifying or making clear uh, things? What are they? Because they're written almost in the plural. Uriyam uh, Batumim. Very unusual, <laughs> unusual words. Um, and yet, um, uh, we're going to see that it seems that uh, uh, everybody just assumed that we know what they are. Comes along Rashi and Rashi says, what are these Urim Vatumim? So he says, Hu Ksav Shem Hamafeiros. It was a, a, a writing on some form of parchment or some form of uh, uh, material like paper or parchment uh, somebody, which we have to assume that was Moshe Rabbeinu, wrote the name of the the the, uh, the four-letter name Shema Mefirish, usually means the Yud Kevo. Okay, um, it was written out on a parchment. Now, according to certain other great uh, commentators, it wasn't just the Shema Mefirish Yud Kevo K, okay, but it was one of the um, combinations of the, of the uh, Shem Yud Kei Vav Kei. It was what we call from the Miluim, the filling ups of the Shem Havayim, which adds up to 72. It's called the Shem Ayin Beit. That's the Shem uh, Havayim, the Milui Yudin. But it's not the place to go into the whole Kabbalistic aspect of that. I was surprised to say that they claimed that it was Dabki that uh, Shem, in other words. It wasn't just Yud K Vav K, but it was Yud Vav Dalad and then K with the Yud and then a Vav with the Yud and a Vav and a, 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 a Milui of the Shem of Ayev with Yuds. And that adds up to Ayin Beis. And that's also called Shem Amafeiros because it's the, it's the Shem of Ayev, but it's just written in its full, what you might call, touching out the letters in their full literary uh, extent. But you can do that in various ways with different combinations. So that's what they call the Milui uh, uh, involving Newton. So Rashi says that the Urim Batumim was a, a parchment that had uh, the Kurdish the name, the Yudke Vovke, written on it. He put it in the double, because if you remember, if you done your fitas, uh, it's rather difficult, but the Choyshen was a, a doubled up thing. It was made a certain length, and then it was folded and uh, doubled up. Uh, and so, according to Rashi, they took this written Shem of Eirish and they slipped it in. Now, you've got a very beautiful Chomis, but you have to pay attention to what we're saying. You don't sit and read the Chomis, all right? It's, uh, so, um, they slipped in this Shem of Eirish in between the doubling up of the, of the Chosha. Shal Yodai, what was through the purpose or through the medium of this name and this parchment with border name, who maya devorov, or metamim es devorov. It lights up its words and it literally uh, simplifies, explains, or makes perfect its words. Rashi brings a gemara on the sector uh, Yuma, Daf Ayin Gimel. Whatever there. But the Gemara says that uh, they used to ask uh, questions in the Choyshim Mishpat, and these questions were directed to these Urim Batumim. These questions were directed to uh, the Shem Akkadish was inside the, um, the Urim Batumim, according to Rashi, and they used to get answers. Now, who's they? <coughs> the Koyan Godel, he had to stand. And he has to stand facing the Ori. And the person who was asking the question, he had to stand behind the, the Kerngodel, and he was able, to, he was just required to whisper almost, say in a very low voice, what his um, question is. Now, when I say his, uh, we'll soon see in a second that it's apparent in the Gemara and in the Rambam and the other great uh, codifiers of the, of the commandments that you could only ask questions which were public questions, things which involved uh, the whole people. Now, therefore, for example, the king, uh, the melech, he asked, 
in the because anything he asked was for the benefit of the whole country. The Sanhedrin, uh, they could ask as to how to decide on certain matters, or they could ask together with the king or under his instructions, or he under their instructions. Uh, in other words, <coughs> only public figures who had in mind uh, questions which were uh, 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 relevant to the whole public, well, they would be able to, to ask. But we'll see as we go along, most authorities hold that you couldn't ask a personal question, something in your own personal life, you couldn't ask in the Urim Vatumim. So the question stood, he asked the question, uh, 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 well, he didn't actually ask the question, the guy who was behind him asked the question, but the question standing there, and he's facing the Urim Vatumim, and then all of a sudden, <coughs> according to the Gemara, the names, the letters of the names of the Eden started to uh, bulge. <laughs> Literally, uh, they used to sort of pop out certain letters, and they used to blink, you know, with light. They would sort of go on and off and illuminate like, um, uh, like a light. And certain letters would just go bing, bing <laughs> on the on the flesh and mishpat, and that's all. And so uh, the Queen God, though, he's got to be able to look at the the, the and he's got to know what is this really saying. <laughs> he's got to be able to, because what happened was that the certain letters of the different names just started to illuminate. Not all of them, of course, only certain of them. But he's got to know how to read them. I mean, you, you, you could read them in any order. <laughs> Uh, the more the more that we're bulging and lighting, then the more conflict it becomes. What is the order of them? You know, how are they supposed to be? How are they supposed to be ordered? So there were it's apparently in the Gemara that Urim, uh, the word Urim means they were illuminating. They were meir. They were giving off light, meaning that the letters were popping yeah, and giving uh, light. And uh, Tumim means that the Kohen God least got to know how to. He's got to know how to read it. He's got to know um, what is the purest and what is the simplicity and what is literally the understanding of those, um, and that's like purification or, or perfection of the matter, making it simple and perfect. And so he, he gets the, uh, a divine inspiration and he's able to know what the combination of the letters are and what sentence is that putting forward. Now usually the sentences were very brief. For example, is uh, against Spatsila, as they say in English. It's but maybe it's if if it was uh, a question, you know, should we go to war? Then it would try to be uh, what I say try. The the sentence would be deliberately brief. It would be go go or do or something. So then it would be easier for the current Godel to understand what were the combination of the letters. But as I said, the more it becomes uh, uh, complex, the answer, and the more letters are peeping, then it's difficult to know what is the, what is the, the word and the sentence which is being put forward. So that, according, it would appear in the Lashon of the Gemara, that that's the word Tumim. Udim is the actual illumination that occurred. Tumim is the purification or coming together with the perfection of the idea and the commandment or, or statement or answer the question which has been given for. <coughs> Others want to assume that the word Tumim also implies that it's bringing you into the world of perfection in the sense that you know what to do now and therefore it implies also the perfection and the simplicity of deed. That now you know what to do, then uh, obviously that's what you're going to do. But we see that this was a way of an important question which had to do with public life. It was a way of literally asking Hashem, what should you, what should you do? And we see that it was um, a, a whole thing that uh, was expected and was made uh, a part, or we'll see, maybe it's not a part, of this place in Mishpat, that there should be a Seder by Eden, that they should be able to come and ask, hey, Mr. what should they, what should they do? And so once they got an answer in the, in the, in the Urim Batumim, or through the Urim Batumim, because according to Russia, they didn't get an answer in the Urim Batumim, the Urim Batumim was just a shem of a shem which were inside there. 
the question, but they got on the letters of the names of the Eden, you have the answer, what should they do? <coughs> so according to that, the Ulim Vatumim were not actually part of the Phoetian, they were something that were put into the Phoetian, and they made the Phoetian have uh, uh, divine uh, 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 indications, or allowed it, or made possible for it to illuminate to the Eden what should be done. Now that, that means that once you've asked the Avista and he's told you what to do, then you're on a, you're on a shore wicket. <coughs> And you know that if you do that, then that's, that's going to be much or it's going to be ultimately for the best. And if he said not to do it, then, uh, then you know that you mustn't uh, do it. And uh, therefore in the Roshalmi, just by way, put down a whole thing that there was once in a case where the Sanhedrin did ask in the, in the, um, in, in the Uri Batumim, and um, it didn't come out good. It was just a, a whole thing that happened with this um, terrible clash that occurred with Shevet bin Yomim, due to what was called the Pelegish Bekivo. It's a whole uh, painful story. Uh, it's brought down in safe uh, team, but the Sanhedrin wanted to know should they make war against Shevet bin Yomim or not. So uh, the Ramban and other great uh, before should say that the problem over there was not that God forbid they got a mistaken answer, but they didn't ask properly. They asked in a way which wasn't uh, correct. And therefore, yeah, they got, uh, as it were, a punishment or incorrect answering, and therefore they were unable to understand it properly because they didn't ask in the right way. Most such people, a whole series of different in young. But apart from that, we find that all over, wherever they asked in the Urim Vatumim, that it was like you might say, a sure bet. If you asked in the Urim Vatumim, then you know exactly what you've got to do, and you just go ahead and do it. Guti shum, daiga klalu. Cloud, but that is the way to Emesa, Emesa Hatzloch. Comes along Rashi now, and he says a very uh, strange thing. Not Kedarki, they usually don't go into things like this. And he says, Ubamikta Shani, in the second place of Mikdash, Hoya Achoisha. There was the Choisha, they had the actual shield on the Kuin Godel. Why? She Efshel a Kuin Godel. It's impossible for the Kohen Gadol to be lacking one of his clothes. That's what's called Kohen Mechusa Begodim. means if he enters the Eomer lacking the right number of clothes, then he's Chayim Mizrach one in the club. And he's not allowed, he's a void, it's not, uh, it's not proper. He said, ever it couldn't possibly be that the whole of the period of the, of the bias Shani that the Kohen Gadol served uh, in, in the base of Midian, he must have had eight, uh, he has to wear eight garments, including the, the, you know, the Mitznefis and all things, and the Chosh Mishpah took one of his eight garments. So therefore Rashi says that in the Mikta Shani he had the Chosh, but he said they didn't have uh, the Urimba to him. Oh, but this, this name, and this Shem of Fudu, was inside, they didn't have it. Therefore he said, she is the Kohen Gadol, he is Mechusa Begodim. I will always say Hashem. Of that name, Loi Hoya Betoicha. It wasn't entitled. The Hashem, Loi Shia Haksav. Oh, full stop. So right here in the middle of everything, Rashi is put in that um, in the second base of Mictus it wasn't there. But the Chosen was there. And the reason the Chosen was there because the Kohen Gadol has to have the right number of of Begadim. Full stop. Be'al Shem Oishachsav. And according to the name of that, well, not according to the name of it, but due to the fact that that writing of the Shem Amaferis was inside the, the Sheol, it, that's what gave it the name Karuhi Mishpat. And that was called yeah, the word Mishpat. In other words, we've got two in Yonah. We have a Choishen and we have a Choishen Amishpat. What gave it the word Mishpat? What, why do we call it the shield of judgment? Only because of that Ksav which was inside it. In other words, without the Ksav, it's not really a Choysh Amishpat, it's only Choysh. But in order to be Choysh Mishpat, then it has to have the Ksav yeah, inside it, and on uh, due to that Ksav, it's called the word Mishpat. So I have a Shinema, how do I know that? It is written 
and he will answer in the, or he will ask rather, he will inquire in the judgment of the Uriim. <coughs> now that's interesting. That's the Pasik over there in Pasha Pinchos, where Moshe Rabbein prior to his passing, he makes it clear that Yeshua is going to be his uh, follower. And then he said that Yeshua will stand in front of El Lozor, who was, he was the current god after his father Aaron. He will stand in front of El Lozor, and he will ask whenever he needs to know anything, he will do the right thing, and he will ask in the Mishpat Ha'udim through El Lozor. That's the Pshat. <coughs> like we saw, he has to ask in the presence of the current god And he will ask the Mishpat Ha'udim. Now it's very fascinating over there, it doesn't call them Ulim but the Tumim, it just calls them Ulim. <laughs> Kema Ulim. That's a big question why they say Ulim but Tumim. But we see from that that the Mishpat that you are, or that the Mishpat of the of the of the Khoisan uh, Mishpat is because of the Ulim. He will ask in the Mishpat of the Ulim. For that we see that Khoisan the Mishpat is from the Ulim. Uh, and including the Tumim. But why does mention over there, the Tumim, but that's another thing which uh, I don't want to go into. We're getting off on our heads for the moment. Without going over there, why didn't he mention any of the uh, Tumim? He just mentioned the Uri. Uh, however, we see from that that without the Uri, it's not really called, it's not really a question, which part, it's just a question, says Rashi. So, on the one hand, Rashi seems to almost like play on two. Uh, to use the old expression, to dance on two weddings, you know, <laughs> at the same time. What's well, put down, uh, there's an old saying in English, you can't do that. <laughs> um, I think right, you, you can't be in two places at once, that's um, axiomatic. So uh, Rashi says on the one yeah. hand, that the Ksav, uh, the Shema Mephoiros, which are called the Uri Matumim, is not essential to the Fraser Mishpah. Because he says that in the in the in the Bayashani it wasn't there. And yet nonetheless the, the current God he had the right number of clothes. Which means that if that Ksav Hamafrida was Mamish part of the clothes, part of the uh Mishpah in an essential way, then the current God wouldn't be able to wear it. He wouldn't be able to go into the Kredus in the whole of Bayashani because he would be Mahusabur Begadi. And therefore Rashi says that since the the Batumim are another Indian outside the Khoisim Mishpat, we have to say that they're not essential to the Khoisim Mishpat. Vahariah, because they, were, they weren't there in Baishaini for some reason. They weren't there. And nonetheless, the Kohen Gadol was not called lacking his Begadi. He had the right number of Begadi. So now we see that these Uri Batumim are not essential to the to the Khoisim. Nonetheless, we see the Khoisan is called Khoisan Hamishpat. It is called in the Torah, and it's written that you have to put these things inside the Khoisan Hamishpat. But for that, it's much better that it's a Khoisan Hamishpat even without putting these things there. And yet, nonetheless, there, Rashi it's not essential. And he says that the whole thing is Kalui Mishpat, Al Shem Auli Batunim. That why is it called Khoisan Hamishpat? Because of the Uri Vatum. So we see that even before they put the Uri Vatum in, they called Khoisan Mishpat. And yet, nonetheless, Rashi is called Khoisan Mishpat because of the Uri Vatum. You know, the Zekhtat Tamur. But we'll hopefully we'll sort that one out. Anyway, on the one hand, if, if, if that makes it appear that the Uri Vatum are very essential to the Khoisan Mishpat. Uh, Rashi said, no, they're not. Because we had a choice without the, the only Vatumi, and we couldn't really call it choice and mishpat, and yet now it was a, it was a kosher choice, because the choice, it wasn't choice and mishpat anymore, but uh, it was a choice, and it was good. <coughs> Excuse me. That the God was able to, he was able to wear uh, that choice, uh, uh, the whole Bayashani, and everything was was fine. He wasn't called lacking his begotten. So that arouses the question, if you've got something which is made to put something else inside it, 
then that something else, and that something else gives it its name, then it hurts an important part of it. For example, we take the orange. Now the orange, you know, the whole wondrous story about the orange, the orange is a cupboard or a container for the for safer turn. <coughs> oh, uh, sorry, for the the loofah. Also for a safer turn. According to the Gemara, Bob Bash, you guys are doing your learning, Bob Bash, what you learn over there. But in, in Bob Bash, you state that there, there's an opinion uh, that uh, there was also a, a safer turn connected with the, uh, with the orange. Anyway, it suffices to say that the orange was made in order to put the, uh, put it into Luchas. Now, in the second place of Hebrews, they didn't have the Luchas. They didn't have the Luchas anymore. And what what was in the Kurdish Akadoshim? Does anybody know? Nothing. <laughs> only Evan Ashesia, only the, the foundation stone of the whole base of Hebrews, and that's all. On, on, on Yom Kippur, when the Kurdish Akadoshim, uh, when the Kurdish went into the Kurdish Akadoshim, he just put the uh, I had to cut the uh, keteris on the oven and I should see it, it filled up but he, he didn't have an aura and he didn't have anything in there. So Kurt said, you didn't have the, uh, you didn't have the, the Lucha, he said, there was no point in my, and the, and the Rashash, one of the great uh, Achroinim, I know, <coughs> uh, there may be others before him, well they asked the question, why didn't we make an aura in the second base of Mikdos and just put the aura in there, I mean, we, I know, we didn't have the Lucha, but uh, uh, put the R in, at least make the R and put it in there. No, we didn't. It was not. So here Rashi says, you put the, the Uri Vatumim inside the, the Khoshin Mishpat, and, it, and it's called Khoshin Hamishpat because of that. And nonetheless, it's okay. Even if it doesn't have the thing inside it, uh, we still, oh yeah, we had it, the whole Bayashani, and it was part of the Shemayin of God, but it came up. It wasn't the difference. What's the difference between that and that with R and we didn't make, but it was made to. So we have to say that the difference is that the orain is called orain ho edus. Its whole inner was to be a, a container for the luchas. In other words, if there's no luchas, then there's no point to the orain cloud cloth and any inion. And even the, the kruvium and all those in the orain and the, the wondrous things that were connected with the, with the orain, if you don't have the luchas inside, you don't have to, there's no point to the whole thing because it's called Orin Haidus. The Orin of the Haidu. Uh, uh, so you can say, well, this is called Khoishan Hamishpat. This is the Khoishan of the Mishpat. One of the Mishpat says, right to the Urim Atomim. And the people say, right to the Urim Atomim. If they're not there, no Khoishan. Okay. So now we have to say that there's a difference. And if you look at the way we made the whole Khoishan Hamishpat, well, names of the Jewish people on it, and they were a Zikorin, and they were this, and they were that, and all sorts of amazing things connected with the faith. And therefore, we, that, with that we can answer this apparent doubling out. First of all, uh, there's a union in the, in the Chesh and Mishpot, says the Pasik, that Aaron should bear on his heart a remembrance of the Jewish people, it's a remembrance, just to mention their names in front of them. <coughs> and yeah, was, uh, I'll do it when you, you know, when you go to, uh, in, into the river, you take in the names of all your family, you're not going to ask about it. You give the river, the river looks at the names, that, that's already better than what you could want. Uh, in other words, if the river sees you, remembers their names, that's the shame good. And I mean, the Jewish Mishpot had in itself in to mention the Jewish name. It was a special Indian that reminded the Abish to awoke mocking. From Brocha Vatzloch with the Jewish people. That was one Indian in the place. And the other Indian in the place was a Christian Mish. Yeah, Mishpat. And it had in itself the Urim Vatumim. Oh, if you didn't have the Urim Vatumim, you saw Tash, you don't have a Christian. Because the Christian had another Indian as well. Or Ulai or Indian. I'm only to say one in. And therefore, we'll be moving with the, the doubling up of the lotion on the one hand. It, it, uh, that, and then to say, but you put the Urim Vatumim in, then there's a Another Indian that Aaron the Quench got to do with carrying it on his heart, he's got also to remember this Indian from Mishpat, we'll see it in a minute, yeah, what would be the details of this, of this Mishpat of the Jewish people, and therefore it's called Choshna Mishpat, and that comes through the Urim to me, Chanami, there is a certain Matthias of the Choshna without the Urim to Mashiach and the Oran is not like that. The Oran was made purely oil for the Lucas. Oran 
Kaidus, it was only an hour and forty eight. As if the end is not there, you don't need an hour. Kain Yeshlam of a Derechef. Amen, a Lafisa Kuntais. That these who are in Vatumium are a separate entity anyway, the Lachola of the according to Rashi. And they can be, they're such a separate entity, they don't really have to be there in order for there to be the Matthias of the Chosha. And there he goes on, he says, Es Mishpat B'nai Yis, Yisrael, says Rashi. What is the inim of the Mishpat that was carried out by the Urim and Because it's only called Mishpat because of the Urim and Tumim. Dover Shehem Mishpatim B'nai Chochim Al Yodim. So what Rashi says, the word mishpah, like we said at the beginning, clarification. You've got a doubt, the public has a doubt, what should it do, either to do this or not do it. And therefore the the the, the, the Udin Vatumim being the mishpah part of the question, or well, they clarified and they made it judged and clear to the public what it should do. And therefore it's called Khoisna Mishpat, because the Unim Vatumim, that's their function. And they bring Mishpat, but they saw into the picture. Another possibility says Rashi, or if he had but that means already Bederacha Agadate Yuter, Shah Khoishin Machaper, Auri Ufsei Hadin. He said it's brought down in the Gemara Mesekta Eirachim. Uh, but the Gemara brings up that all the Bitei Kahuna had a sort of spiritual function that they were machaper for the whole Jewish people, even though they're only warned by the Koyanim. They were machaper on all sorts of unpleasant things that can be that people can get involved in. They like a, a tone for, for things that we we don't we never saw, we never knew, but they you know they go on. And ever he said that, uh, that the Koyan uh, is machaper of uh, improper judgments. That may have been given out uh, by Bati Din or by people or by however that they did improperly according to what is really the the Din. And therefore, the the Yudim Vatumim inside the Chosha Mishpat they like uh, atone for Dionim or for other people on Bezdins that didn't pass in the right way. They didn't do the right thing. And therefore, they called Mishpat Al Shem Shlichas Mishpat. In other words. Yeah, the forgiveness, the forgiveness that Hashem will give for not having been the right mishpat. <coughs> so we see two short in Rashi that can mean clarification, like he said at the beginning. Well, now he adds another possibility that it can be like a forgiveness, uh, a power of bringing forgiveness for all the Jewish people for anything improper that might have been done according to judgments within the Jewish people, mostly according to the Batidin and to the Dayanim of the Batidin. So ask yourself the question, why does Rashi need those two? Why does he need those two Pirushi? Because the first one we've already mentioned and that seems to that seems to be the one he mentioned earlier and well that, that seems to make most uh, sense. However, we'll understand that and then we'll go into this whole idea of the Urim Tumim and a little bit more of a Ruchnistic even. We go to that, if we take a look, we see that we're going to find a very fascinating difference of opinion between Russia and Tisha. Right. So the Gemara brings over here in the sector Yuma, Daf Kofala, on the base. And the Gemara brings over here the difference between the base of Mikdash Rishain and the base of Mikdash Shani, or one of the differences was that in the second base of Mikdash, there was lacking five things, five main aspects uh, uh, were there in the, in the first base of Mikdash, and uh, therefore it's like a, a secondary level that would be the first uh, base of Mikdash. And so it says, what were those uh, Heid Vorim? They were lacking Hamishit Vorim. Shahoyu pain base of Mikdash Rishon and Mikdash Shain. Ve'elu hain. Orein, ve'kapoyrus u'kruvim, 
that there wasn't the iron and there wasn't the, uh, the, br- the lid on the top of the iron or the kruvim. So uh, Rashi points out that that's all one thing, even though it's three words, but it all means one thing because it's all iron. Aish, <coughs> there wasn't the special arrangement of the Aish Mumaila, you know, they used to come down the heavenly fire and uh, 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 absorb the Korbanis on the Mizbeah, and it used to be in the form of a, of a lion, you know, that brings it down, it was in the form of a lion. So on the base of Mikdash it wasn't, it was in the form of a, of a, a kelim, of a dog, <laughs> not, not particularly, uh, how do you call it, uh, well, after a certain point in the, in the base of Mikdash, uh, Shani, but for most of the base of Mikdash, Shani, it was like that. So the Gemara said, well, it wasn't very complimentary, but it was there. I said, what are you going to do? Why do you say it wasn't there? So the Gemara said, well, it was there, but it wasn't there. It never interfered. It just, it, it, it never actually uh, helped anything to burn the components. It just sat above the Mizbeah. But uh, in the first place, I mean, just the lion, uh, the Asian the form of a lion, used to actually come down and uh, absorb the, the actual burning of the components was through that. Anyway, that was Aish, and then Shechina. The Gemara said that the Shechina didn't really dwell in the same way it did in the first place. I mean, there's the Ruach HaKodesh. The Ruach HaKodesh means uh, similar to Navua, Rashi says. The Urim V'tumim. But, and also the Urim V'tumim were not there in the, the second place. I mean, just, uh, Rashi's already told us that. Rashi says, by Shechina, they weren't there, the Urim V'tumim. Comes along, Tesis. Tesis says, Urim V'tumim. So Tesis says, Urim V'tumim Hoyu. That there were Urim V'tumim. And what does the Gemara say that they weren't? She'im Loikain is if it weren't for the fact that, that the Urim V'tumim were there, Hoya Koyen Godel Mechusa Begodim. The Koyen Godel would be lacking his garments. Ela Loi Hoyu Meshivim Lenisholim Behem. Or they didn't give answers you could ask all day and the Urim V'tumim wouldn't answer. But they were there. So uh, it says Jesus, why do we have to say they were there? Because if they weren't there, then the Kohen Gadol would be, he would be uh, 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 lacking the God. Now that seems to be almost opposite of what Rashi says. Because Rashi says that the Kohen Gadol weren't there at all. <clears throat> and nonetheless, the Kohen was there. And that was enough for the Kohen to be called uh, having the full number of God. He says, oh no, if the Urim V'tumim weren't there, then he, he wouldn't have the right number of, he wouldn't be wearing the right number of Begodim. So that would tend to indicate that maybe uh, uh, Jesus understands some different idea as to what were the Urim uh, what were the Urim V'tumim. And ever he holds that they're an essential part of the Phoesian, not just something you slipped into the Phoesian, the central part of it, and if that's lacking, then the whole question is lacking. I why lacking? I why did the Gemara say they weren't there? They just didn't do what they used to do. They were just dormant, but they had to be there. Otherwise, it wouldn't be good. It, the Kohen would not have the right number of clothes. We see from that that Jesus learns that they that they would even do an essential part. They're an essential part of the Hoshim Mishpat. So we should suggest two possibilities. We suggest that Tesis learns that the Uri Vatumim were not like Rashi said, they're not Aksav, how do you call it, Aksav Mufuidish, it was put inside the, the folding of the Hoysen. But the Medrash Lech Akto is a very famous Medrash, and it's brought down some of the great early Rashinim, the great early period commentators, and they say that the Uri Vatumim were the Etzim names and they had some stones alongside the names uh, of the Jewish people on the face of Mishpah. Because, like the Gemara told us, when the, when the person asked his question and the Kohen Gottel turned and faced the Orin, then these stones used to light up. They used to, they used to jolt out and light up. So they were the ones who gave the answer. It was only that the Kohen Gottel needed to be able to read it, otherwise he didn't know what the heck I was saying to him. And therefore, he had a certain rule of was, uh, was given to him that he was able to know immediately what, the, what was the answer. And Amela, the Medrash Lechato says that Urim Vatumim was just the light that came up on the stones, or Be'ikat was the stones, 
of the actual names of the people on the face of me. And there wasn't any separate thing which was called the Urimba to me. And therefore they call Ha Urimba Ha to me. It's only the Lafi said it, it's, a, it's not comfortable the Russian of the Posse. Because first of all, we're told the whole Chosh and Mishpat, and then, was, and then it's written a second verse which says, Vi El Chosh na Mishpat, no Sata Esa Urim Vatumi. But no Sahan, once again. Well, for now, what appears, there's another thing that's being put into the Chosh and Mishpat. So according to the Medrash Lechato, we have to say that that's like just a general statement that, you know, you've already dropped the whole Chosh and Mishpat. Is having done that, and you've been able to put all the all the stones in. It's just deicha. Tamur kitzat of alchopanim. Maybe we would say that that's what Tosis uh, learns. And then what Tosis learns that the Yuri Vatumim are the actual stones on the face of Mishpat, or they're an essential part of the face of Mishpat. If they were lacking, the there's nothing you could possibly do. Okay, you couldn't put that on the curtain go without the names. It's not a question. Mishpot, Klau, or oh, Klau. And why, if we'll say that it's called Mishpot because of the Urim, we're talking, that's very good. Because that's Mamish, an essential part of the Etz of Chayisha. And if I, according to the if it was lacking that, then the Kuren God, or the whole Baishen, he wouldn't be able to go into the, into the, into the sanctuary at all. And if I, we have to say, that uh, uh, they were there, and uh, it's just that they didn't answer. And that's what the Gemara means, that there weren't any Uriver to me. So Lafi said, we can maybe say that the word Uriver to me is not a separate name for a separate entity. Although the word Uriver to me is a name for the way that the Christian reacts to you. It reacts to you by illuminating, and it reacts to you by telling you what you should do. Uriver. And that will be good that it's not a separate entity, and therefore it's written, as how would you be as how to me? Yeah, that you've already known that because you've already visited yourself with it up to now. <coughs> Just that the lesson of the Pusik is Chat Local Kak Chat Muksha. It's a little bit difficult. However, oh, that's where uh, 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 that approach in the Russian of Teisvah is borne out by the fact that in the Rambam, when the Rambam describes the whole Indian of the Chosha Mishpat, he describes it in two parts. He mentions it briefly in the uh, Hilchus base of Achira, and then in the Hilchus Klei Amikdosh, right near the end, the Rambam mentions it uh, the, in detail how they actually made the Chosha Mishpat. And he just says that, uh, that the Udim Batumim were part of the Chosha Mishpat. The heck what they are. This is a Udi Batumim. He doesn't even tell you what they really are. Uh, uh, and he says, we have to say, it just like it is, that Udi Batumim were there in the in, in Baishani, but they weren't answering. My Mishnah Sebi state in, uh, in Tisvah, Pachoti uh, Otea, the same sort of Russian is written in the Rambam. However, it comes along with the Raiva, that he's the great, uh, you know, uh, attacker of the of the Rambam, and he says, oh, wait a minute, you know, why do you say that they, uh, that they were there? And by Shani, and the rival writes exactly like Rashi. He said, no, that they were Sav, the Shema Mofiris was put into the, into the Khoishan, and they weren't there in Bayashen. So we see that there's a, a Maklikas between the very great early, early period commentators as to whether the Khoishan Mishput was something that was put into the Khoishan Mishput, and there was Kila Dova Noi Sav, it's an extra thing, or as to whether it's part, an essential part of the edge of the Mishpat, who blise, going God would be going with a lacking garment. He would have a, he would have a faulty garment. And the Russian in Tosis is very similar to the Russian in the, in the, in the Rambam. But once again, they seem to know, and they just seem to assume, that you know what the only would do. You, you understand yourself what the only would do. He doesn't define them at all. He just says that they're the only but two. He doesn't say what they were. Uh, uh, and we have to assume from Lashenay and the way he writes it that uh, it was something that was there, it was well known in the in the in the Etzem uh, Mishpat itself. And that was an essential part of it. However, it comes along the, uh, the Rebbe in, in, in one of his uh, wondrous sikhs on, on, on Rashi, 
And the Rebbe said that we could say that those two opinions that we saw in Rashi as to what was the word mishpat, and Rashi said it was in of the judgment as to what you should do, either do or don't do, and that was like a clarification uh, was done by the Urim Vatumim. Or another one was that it was a kapara for uh, improper usage of the uh, uh, the piske dinim of the Torah, of the judgment of the Torah, for what we call Ibu Sadin, and he needed for that a kapara. The whole Jewish people need for that a kapara. So there were Rashi said that maybe we could say that uh, the, Rebbe, the Rebbe says that maybe we could say the difference between those two opinions in Moser Taich Mishpat, which is told in the Ulm Vatumim, and we could say that according to the first one, that, uh, 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 that goes according to the opinion that the Krishna Mishpat is a Dover, uh, I'm sorry, the Ulm Vatumim are like an extra thing. And they, they make the Mishpat and they put inside the uh, the the carefully are uh, and through that we decide what we're going to do or what we're not going to do, and even though it's called choishen amishpot, even before that, the nasata el choishen amishpot as a ruling batumim, the Rebbe said sometimes you call thing on its name, even though you hadn't actually done it, but since you know you're going to do that, and everybody seems to know about these ruling batumim, <laughs> that's the that's the holiday, as everybody seems to know what they are. Karashi says. Aksava the Shema Mafeira is a pretty sort of unusual thing. And yet he says, Ah, Uri, Everybody seemed to know what it was all about. Everybody seemed to know what it was. Oh, yes, That was a domination, it was a separate thing. Choyshin, a Hamish point. But if I say that the Choyshin in Tzidin is to be Machaper and to atone for all Jewish people, then that's something that's connected with the other function that we saw. That the Khoishna Mishpat is a general thing for the name of the whole Jewish people, for their schools, for their names, then that Indian is, uh, of, of being Machaper on the Ibu Sadin and Baklau being Machaper on the Jewish people for the Ibu Sadin, for the proper usage of the Din, we can say that's an essential thing in the edge of Khoisha. And therefore, maybe Tosis learned that it was Takiyak Sava but it, 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 it had to do with an essential in him which was negated to the whole Jewish people, and that was essential to the Etzem Choisha. And therefore, if, he's, if that was missing, then something's missing in the Etzem Choisha. Well, maybe it was suggested, maybe Tosis learned that second Mahalach in, in what the Rebbe said. Kehige Shleiman. Well, anyway, whatever, however it comes out is that the, the, the Chosh of Mishpat and the, uh, the Uri Vatumim are connected yeah, essentially one with the, uh, one with the, uh, the Adya. So as a result of Shaila, what happened in Bayashani? They didn't have, they didn't have the Chosh of Mishpat, Rashi says the Bayashani, they didn't have it. I mean, they didn't have the Mishpat in the Chosh they didn't have the Uri Vatumim. And they used to use the Urim according to that shot because the Ika of the fish was they used to ask what to do. So the whole Bayashani, Bayashani was 10 years more than Bayashani, 420 years. That's a lot of time. What did they do during Bayashani if they had what to ask? 420 years, you didn't, didn't have a heck of a lot what to ask. What did they do? If they didn't have the, yeah, the Ksava Mephidus, the Urim Vatumim were not there. The Khrishan was there, but the Uri Matumim were not there. So what did they do? How did they act? Was it, what did they do all those years? I see the Zinu Bora, all that many people, the young said, silent. I mean, should, what are you even going to do for 420 years? So there we, we, we find some of the really great uh, early commentators, and it must be written in some of the Madrashim, I just know, you know, I haven't been for a while, I just don't have the ability to look through all the different Midrashim, but the Rabbein of Bechaye and other great uh, Roshonim, they bring down that in the, uh, in the, in, in the, in Baishani, they relied on what's called a Baskur. Have you ever heard of a Baskur? Have you ever heard of a Baskur? Yeah. Well, we find it very often in the Gemara, and the Gemara says Baskur, you know, a Baskur went out and said this is the, and Basco and Basco, yeah, uh, uh, we find a lot of the place this expression which we the, the the daughter of a voice, Basco, Basco. So the Rabbin of Chai's got all beautiful. Why did our sages go up in Kabul? Why they called Batco? Why not Benco? <laughs> Why not Kol? Was it 
Bas Kol. In other words, that there was a call went out from heaven, but what we actually heard down there was only like a, a, a echo of that call. And therefore it's called a, a call of a call, and it's called a bat call. So he connects up with the spirit of the spirit of Samalchis, that's in from Bat, oh, or he's in Kabbalah. That's right, the, the Rabbeinu Bahaye. He says that at the time, in, uh, during Bai Shani, that they used to ritually ask, but they didn't ask in the Urim of Tumim, because they didn't have them. But they used to request that Hashem answer them, and they got answers through Baskur. So I come to you and say, I don't want to talk. I said, do that always. Why did you tell me? Well, she thought I was Urim of Tumim in the first place. I mean, you have to have the Urim of Tumim. Yeah, if you can just get from a basket, then that seems to be, in a way, easier in a word of common. So the Rebbein Bahai goes in you know, over there to a whole big thing, and he says that there are different levels in revelation of Hashem to people in general and to the public, in different ways he aims to reveal himself. And he said, the law is Madrig is Basco. The law is Madrig is Basco. Then he said there was the Uri Vatumim. But that's higher than that. It's a higher madriga, because the queen who faced it, he had to be a queen godl, and he had to be, and he had to have a certain trace of ruach hakodesh. Of a higher than a basko, there's ruach hakodesh mamish. That certain individuals can have ruach hakodesh, and he said higher than all that is nevua, prophecy. That's the highest of all. So ever he said that in the in the in the uh, base hamikdash, well, that was a place of gila of course. Is they had a they had the Uri Vatumim, right? Uri Vatumim was a high Madrega, higher than a Baskil, because it's killed that the uh, the the Abish that came down and answered through the the, the Kedusha of the Etzim Mikdash, what that was the current God and the so therefore it's from a higher level in Elikus, and it's a more what you might call understandable and exact and pure clarity type answer. Either do this, do that. But a basker wasn't always so clear exactly what was the implications. And he said that's a lower level of revelation of divine inspiration to the public. And therefore we find a very fascinating thing. Uh, the Gemara says in Sector uh, Baba Matia that aim mash gichim babasker. You don't pay any attention to a basker. It's all big machlekes of the revelation with the chachomim. I went out of heavenly voice, a basker went out and said the Rebbe Lez is right, even though the Chachamim were very upset with him about a certain point of the whole story. But nonetheless, the basker said that the Rebbe Lez is right. He <laughs> was that the Rebbe Lez is right. I mean, he came, what do we do with the fact that the Chachamim were very, very upset with him? So he gets up Rebbe Yeshua, uh, Rebbe Yeshua ben Hanani, he gets up and he says, Ein mashgichim babasker. He said, you don't pay any attention to basker. He has written, Kiloi Bashamayim, he, the Torah is not in the, the heaven, the Torah is down here, and we are the majority, and we pass it like that. Then Rabbi Elias is not right, even though the apes, the, this Pascal said that he's right. They stay told in the Gemara. Ain't much given by Pascal. So if it ain't much given by Pascal, what else? All the Rashidim said, well, the Baisha, they were relying on the Pascal. The answer is very clear. That that what Rabbi Yeshua said, that ain't much given by Basque, he means in Halacha, in Paskin, in Adin, the Sanhedrin, or the Beis, or whatever, as the Paskin, the Din, they can't just say, oh, yeah, give me a Basque, and then I'll Paskin the Din. You, as a, the, the Chachmah Torah, you have to Paskin, the Lebe Shemayim, the Torah is not in, but when you don't know what to do, and you're not sure what are you supposed to do, and there's fakers in this world as to how you're supposed to act. So then you can get a Pasco, and then that can help you here. In other words, we are much given by Pasco, but during Kehle. Of a union, Aloha ain't much given by Pasco. In matters of Aloha ain't much given by Pasco. So anyway, says the Rabbein of Ahai over there, that he says that we had a senior from, uh, there was a senior from Pasco. So then he goes on to say, uh, he broadens his discussion, uh, 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 that was in Baishain. And it's much more that he means Liachle. He comes along the Rabbeinu Bechai and he says that Bechain, he said, Ko Chachmei Hadoireis, all the great Chachmei Hadoireis, and 
He said they also had the ability to know and to uh, uh, literally tell people what they should do. And he said either that was either from Basco or it was maybe even a, a slightly lower Madrid. And he said Basco was either there and by chain. The further you go away, the lower you get. But he said that there was a certain gift of divine inspiration which was given to him through the Indian Pascha into all the Chachmeha Adoiras with the Chachmeha Toira that they had an a, a inspiration, a divine revelation me aim the Indian of the Urim Vatumim or be it was in a slightly lower level it was the Indian of the of a Pascha now where does he write all this of Ben Abachai? the interesting thing is he doesn't write it here in our Pascha but he writes it, and this is the question he writes it over right at the end of the Torah, in the last few Pesukim of the Torah, when it's written over there that Moshe Rabbeinu gave blessings to all the tribes prior to his withdrawal from the physical uh, observation. And it's written over there that he gave blessings, and Zois Habracha, Asher Beirach Moshe, as B'nai Yisrael, this is the bracha. Then he said to Ruve, and then he said to Shimon Levi, and then it gets to Levi, and it's written to Levi Oma. You guys, Bali Koyes, I'm super to you. I split it about twenty or thirty times. So you got to give everybody a, an aliyah. Uh, it's written over there that Levi Oma to Mecha Urecha Leish Kasi Decha. That you are tumim v'urim, not only but tumim v'urim. Yeah, you are tumim v'urim, ali ish chasidecha to your man who is a, a pious man. He called a, a chosid. He's a, 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 I am as a pious man. All your urim v'tumim, they belong to him. And Levi was the ever pious man. Levi, Levi didn't sin in the in the ayur. He didn't get involved in all the what you might call the, the rather gruesome minyanium, Levi always remained uh, higher and better and withdrawn, holy, Shevet Levi was always very holy, and therefore, to mecha vi urecha le ish chasi, le ish chasi tev. So it comes along the rabbin of Bechayi, we should, we should do it, it's supposed to be to mecha vi urecha le ish chasi tev. So he said, "Ish Chasidelcha," and it's mocking. He refers to Aaron. The Aaron, I could, he was he was the emissary of Chasid. He was the most pure and elevated outside Moshe Rabbeinu. We don't know of anybody higher than than uh, Aaron. I could, he, and therefore the Uli Matumim were first of all his Indian. Uh, he was able to get answers, and then Allah Zaha Koyin and the other great Koyin and him after him. Excepting, uh, or as we saw, however, by a shade, there was already a change that the Urim Batumin went uh, answer. However, comes along over there, the Rabbeinu B'chayyeh, and then he says there are several levels, like we said, there's Ruach HaKri, there's Nebua, and, uh, and the Basque oil. And then he says that the Chakmei Adoides, they were like the continuation of this whole thing. And the Chakmei Adoides, they had... He says they had a form of baskuil, and they were able to, through that, know things and assist people and help them know what they should do. I see this much more to the lesson of the Rabbeinu Bechayi. What if he said, well, how the Rabbeinu Bechayi is moving forward a step, at least he's hinting to something. And I'm sure it's written in other stories, you know, the Koya the, the ability uh, to look up all the different Makoya rates. And that is, that once again, answer the question, what happened after Bayashani? He goes into the question, what happened by Bayashani? You didn't have the Uri Vatumi. What did you have? You had Basque. After the destruction of Bayashani, and you didn't went into Golis, never, uh, 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 what's it, what's, what's, what did they have there? Was Yemo? Hence, Rabbi Nebuchadnezzar, they had the Chachom. They had the Chachom. And the Chachomim, they had the Koyach of Pascha. They had the ability to reveal things and to know was how to assist people and how to help them and how to 
rule for the public, but maybe even for the individual. Maybe even for the individual. But they knew how to rule to say at the infant. The continuation of the Ulema too, he went to a Obira Yerida and an East Auschwitz, but Urecha, to Mecha, Urecha, the East Kasi, the East Kasi Derecha. And the fact, it would appear that why did put two men before Uriam? Uh, that's a raya. Uh, how did these people have lied? Because they were two men. And because they were ever some professional people. <coughs> and they gave away themselves to Hashem that everything they did was as much as a human being can be expected to be. It was perfect. And therefore they had to lie. And they were able to see two mecha v'yurecha. Not fully for two men. <laughs> In the base of but that was a united place. Everything went first. Light, and then you brought out the perfection of the mind. So, but these people are running along in the base of Mikdash, and never the base of Mikdash is destroyed, it's only as man of God, it's so like money in time. And then I asked, yeah, to make of you, all right, first you're going to be a Tommy, you're going to be a Tommy in Baman, so that's to be even for perfection and postures and carrying out everything. Or oh, then you go up to Uruk, and then things become lifted, and you're able to see, and you're able to be given. A bashka, or even we'll see when a baby is young and a mile of each And then he brings down the Rabbeinu Bachaya, the Smashman, the Ramban. He brings it down. The Smashman, the Ramban, that the Rabbeinu Bachaya relies very heavily on the Ramban, but in this case he differs with him slightly. That the Ramban holds that the uh, Ruach Hakodesh is higher than the Vua. The the Rabbeinu Bachaya says Ruach Hakodesh is lower than the Vua. Ruach Hakodesh is the third, my dragon, the Vua highest. And the Ramban says that the uh, Nevoa is the third and the fourth Madriga is Ruach HaKodesh. The highest Madriga of all is Ruach HaKodesh. <coughs> so, Laman what, HaKimina, what, what's that Lachara got to do with it? So the opinion is, it's a, a very interesting man brought down from the Rebbe Rashab in Tophrei Samach Tess. But over there, the Rebbe Rashab refers to uh, the story about Yoina ben Amitai, you know the famous uh, 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 Novi, uh, Jonah, Yoina, you know, you heard of Yoina ben Amitai, he was told by the Avis to go and say that Ninvu is going to fall, we read on Yom Kippur, that's the, how they call Mahti Yoina, that's the one time when you didn't let their pockets flow, you don't know how many thousands of dollars people pay for Mahti Yoina, you know, the, the Rabbeim always used to have uh, Mahti Yoyna. They were mums very tremendously particular to get Mahti Yoyna. The Rebbe, the Rebbe, Melech he used to get Mahti Yoyna even before he became Rebbe. He used to be a special meaning for him to give him uh, Mahti Yoyna. It's a very amazing school. Uh, the whole story of the Rebbe Rashaab is telling an amazing story. Mind boggling. But the other Rebbe Rashaab got Mahti Yoyna of a... Uh, it's a bit too long if we, if we get into that story, then we won't be able to continue this year. So I'm sure everybody will prefer to continue this year. But anyway, whatever. It's um, um, Mahti Yoyna. So it's written over there, Mahti Yoyna, that he had a very hard time. He was told to go and uh, say that Ninva was going to fall, and all these crazy going with Ninva or whatnot weren't crazy, that's not nice to say. They did chew <laughs> The king said, oh yeah, so everybody has to chew everybody has to give back all the bad things he's done. And the said, okay, we're not destroying Ninveh. So you yeah, said, what are you talking to me? So, <laughs> I gave him the vua, and I said, we're going to go back. And he got very upset, and I said, you're never going to Mars. <coughs> so the taste is Masekta Sukha, a very famous taste of it. Jesus says over there that Yaina ben Amitai, he got his Navua during Simcha's Pace of Shoeva. You ever heard of Simcha's Pace of Shoeva? So Jesus says that there's a Medras which says that when the Eden were being happy at Simcha's Pace of Shoeva, in the Pace of Mikas, some believable simcha. Misha loy ra, simcha is based on shaiva, loy ra, simcha me, me yama, and I think that can be said about the simcha is based on shaiva. Somebody who never saw that has never seen simcha me yama. 
Well, I'm sure some of you guys have actually seen that. It's, uh, however, it's, uh, it says the, the, the Medras, because of the wondrous Simcha that people had, and Simcha is one of the greatest things you can do to make the Shechina dwell on you. Uh, the <coughs> and the Gemara says that, Ein a Simcha, Ein, ein a, 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 a Shechina Shoiro, Ela mitek Simcha. So since it was such an amazing time in Simcha, Gemara said, all the Yidin over there were all Shoyavim. When they drew the water, they drew Ruach HaKadosh together with the water. They drew Ruach HaKadosh. So they have, they have, they have all of them, all the Yidin over there. <laughs> so Teisha says that since everybody, uh, when did Yenah Ben Amitai get his uh, Nebuah, he said he got it at, at, at the time it seemed it was based on Shoah Eva, because everybody was getting Ruach HaKadosh, so he said he got Nebuah. Uh, comes again, the Rebbe Rashab, and the Rebbe Rashab, the Titus from there, it's Marshman, the Ruach Kui is even higher than the Buah. Since he had, uh, since he had, Ruach Kui, he said, anyway, he had the Buah. I wonder, but why didn't everybody have the Buah? Because maybe not everybody was as pure as what he was. So he got the Buah before. Now, why do I say that? Because even though Ruach Kui is a very, very high Madriga, but it's a sort of an unconscious Madriga. You can have Ruach HaKoides and say certain things, but and Emma's a, and Emma's a divine inspiration, but it's not necessarily the way that you you know you see all the divine madrigas that lead to this with your eye. If you is that you see everything Mamish with your eye, and you're able to report it all over, and then you become as up as the people have to listen to you. It's a divine commandment to listen to an Ovi. Of the Ruach HaKoides, Depends. I understand it. Either it's even more of a mitzvah, or it's not a mitzvah. It's too high. So anyway, says the Rebbe Rashab over there that Paul and Rabbuah and Kuyis can even be higher than Nabuah. Are they stated? Now in other places, it's written the other way. In other words, it's a difference of opinion between the the Rabbein of Bchai and the Ramban, and that takes occurs in Siddur. In some places, it's written that Nabuah is higher than Ruach. Of a Torah statement. And I say it's much more in the Gemara Dot and in the in the in that days of it. So Yehuda ben Amitai, he got involved in the whole thing because he, he got really involved in super space of Shoyeva. And all of a sudden he got this Navua and he saw it and he had no prayer he had to go, but he didn't want to get involved and therefore yeah, he tried to get himself drowned. You know the whole story with the the story, he asked that people should throw him over the board of the ship at all. Unbelievable thing. You know why that was? I mean he got a Navua. Come to what you told Lama was Why did he try to avoid his Nabu? Why did he want to get thrown into the sea with old mouths? I don't know the answer. I fought down in certain places, I pillar to get you. But the answer was Yoina was a very clever guy. I felt like he was unknowing. So he knew <laughs> he knew that the goyim it's much easier to make them do tshuva and get scared than what it is Yidin. <laughs> and he knew that Yidin had a lot to, at that particular time when he was, Yidin had a lot of things they had to do tshuva about. And he was worried that if he went to Ninveh, then Ninveh would get scared, all the girls would say, Ooh, yours, we're going to do tshuva, don't destroy our saviors. <laughs> That's exactly what happened. And that would be a kitrug against the Yidin. That wouldn't be, that would be an accusation against the Jewish people. Why don't they do it so quick? Therefore, he said, I don't want this whole Nabu, I don't want to do it. Because he didn't want to be Makat after the Jewish people. You don't know the matter. You guys are all for slow. I mean, otherwise, it doesn't make any sense. Why would he run away and not want to carry out his Nabu? Doesn't make any sense. Anyway, uh, <laughs> What does it all boil down to? That sometimes the Ruach HaKodesh is the highest, sometimes the Ruach is the highest. But it all comes from the singing of the Univa too. So what do we see from that? My Anakim he said, that in uh, all the generations, right from the time the age to put up the Beis Amitus, even they just got out of Mitzrayim, they're in the Midbar, right from the very beginning, there's a commandment that you have to ask before you do something. You have to inquire and you have to find out what is the proper thing to do and 
the Beis Hamikdash was and the, and the Mishka was such holy places and such unbelievable Gila El You get asked directly. You get asked in the Urim and and you got bulging lights and everything. They had a quick model. And he was telling you exactly what you need to know. As it went down a bit further, when it was based on Migdos, there was still all in between. It went down to the Baishani, it was a lower Madreya, couldn't have been a Baha'i. But still, people are to wanted to know what to do. After it's all gone, they attacked. One slide, it's in Golis, what is it in the Emerald? Says the Rabbeinu B'chai, you ask the Chachamim. You go to the Chachamim and you ask. And they have, and then it's much more that due to the fact that you're not with all the limitations in the Vodah Commons that was there, but it's Man Amikdosh, you can even ask about a personal thing. Can't speak with a, 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 a Ishi. And so it goes down and it's Mishtaus from Midel Adel, and we should suggest that the further it goes down, it doesn't go down, it it goes up again. It goes up to a higher state because once you get so far down, the apes has to have Rachmanin. And he has to help. He has to, can't leave you like that. He can't leave you in the Zamat. And ever, the further it went down, the more higher these, these Chachamin became. And they had greater and unbelievable insights despite the terrible Choyshek of the Gala. And therefore, it's not just a custom, it's not just a signature. Had he called Mishagai is that if you want to know what to do, you go and ask a rabbin. Does he give an ayin in Yiddish like me? Rega harishon. You have to ask what to do. Favuvet, because everything runs according to Torah. Everything, the Torah is the blueprint of the whole world. Everything runs according to Torah. You want to know what to do? You have to go to the mockery where the Torah is made of shleimus, the tachlis of shleimus, and that was the base of the Tura was mayor over there, but Tatu Sashlamas, you could ask what to do. Don't cost the What have you got to do? I Rahman in the clan, the Tadeza Tam, a booty moving cloud, the apes who took away the base of meters. Like the Rebbe said, it doesn't make any sense whatsoever that he doesn't rebuild it now. I woke up on him, the apes took away the base of meters. It went down, says the Rebbe, I went to the Chachmeh, I used to ask the Chachmeh. Akimara, what do we do now? What is it do this yet? And the further it went down, it doesn't go down, it goes back up again. And how do I know that? The Rebbe Melech Mashiach thought this. First of all, it's written in that mind with the Rebbe Rashab, and it's written in another mind with the Altar Rebbe, where the Altar Rebbe said that a Baal Ruach, a Kodesh, is as I mentioned, you ask him, and he just hears what you ask him, and he just boom. And you have to do what he says. Okhnuva, if you don't do what he says, and then you'll say to him, wait a minute, why didn't you tell me what you mean? Why didn't you explain yourself? So he said, I didn't know what myself, all I knew was that i got to say to you, Kafe, Ka, you don't know with the Titanic, you don't know what the Titanic, what is it with the Titanic? I was in the manager, went down to on the first journey. And there was a big cousin that he wanted to go to America with his family on the Titanic. He had money, he, wanted, he bought himself a place on the Titanic. He sent in a, a, a pedic to the Rebbe Hashem for a bracha that is a phone in America of the Titanic. So they showed the pedic to the Rebbe Hashem, the Rebbe Hashem looked at it and he said, well, like that. that's, what, that's what he did. <laughs> so everybody, the, the Gabbai was thunderstruck, he didn't know what, you know, what, what does that mean? So he went out and he told the Chassid, you know, the Rebbe looked at it and he went, <laughs> So the Fasid was, he was also tremendously thunderstruck. What's he going to do? He's got a, a ticket on the Titanic. He wants a bracha. He wants to go with his family on the Titanic. He doesn't understand who's who the river. So he got to the Gabba and he made a whole trip and he wrote it again and he wrote it in a different way. And they do it, they do it. He walks into the river, I shout him, the river, shout him, looks at him and he said, I already said what I have to say. He said, I already, I already said what I have to say. In other words, in Yiddish, he called mine shame gazot. I already said my my thing. So the governor came back out. He said, "Listen, man. He said, if I were you, sure, maybe I wouldn't go. <laughs> don't do it." He said, "The rabbi doesn't like it for some reason." He said, "Don't, don't do it. Said, Stay away." He got put on his counter. Rubel sent the ticket that it's the biggest ship in the world. He said, "Do it." He said, "Don't go." So he didn't go. Look what happened. Morning. So later the Chassid got into the 
I'm saying it as a leaflet from all the things that are out there. All these inyonim go from one step to the other. And the Yuri Matu come down to all the generations. I mean, that's what I'm saying. That's all written like I said before. I'm a mirror to come back to the Nakuda of the Uri Matu Imade, and that's what the Rebbe said that 770 is the base of Mittosh. All it's got to do is get, get up into the air, come across, and, and the famous Sikha of Beis uh, Probeno Asher Babovel. I'm a mirror, that's it, guys. So all we've got to do is listen to the Rebbe and listen intently to what he says and give it over to everybody and that is the salvation of the world. And all these crazy goylums wake up to the fact that there's no other way to do it. But the Rebbe's way, there's going to be a nebuch. There has been. I hope there will never be anymore because Moshiach is coming, taking me out. But there's been a, a lot of trouble, unfortunately. Therefore, don't be Google-eyed. Don't be Google-eyed by all sorts of nourish uh, chocolates that are thrown at you. And they just gave over the radio. They shot some big, uh, some big uh, terrorist or something uh, that he was the leader of the Hezbollahs, and they put a bullet to his head. So now they're going to strut around all these idiots, and they're going to say, oh, you see, we achieved such wondrous things for the public. We put a bullet to the head of the biggest terrorist. And that is a bluff, Shein Kamoyu. Because that doesn't matter a, a, a key who's there to the matzah. It doesn't affect the whole situation. A key who's there. Because tomorrow they bring another one. you got to go to the bottom of it. You've got to root the whole thing out. You've got to blow them all out to smithereens. Get rid of them all. Root out the whole thing from the bottom. I am advising was to do You've got to clean out the whole matzah. And if, 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 if you claim that you fight terrorism, you've got to fight terrorism, not a terrorist. No matter how big he may be, it doesn't bother anybody. That's a terrible, you know, how do you call it, a chizus inayim. It's a, a bluff. And a, and a, when you walk in the dirt, you see these little things, it's a mirror. It's a mirror. Well, I'm thinking, that's what we're doing. We're living in a world of mirages. Illusions and bluff. You've got to be careful not to be taken in by the bluff, not to be fatigued by the bluff. You have to know that the one and only way is being given over by the Novi and the Baruch Hakridus. You name it, he's got it. If there is a Baruch Hakridus, he's a Baruch Hakridus. If he's a Novi, he's a Novi. Who is your Wulster? Masha told him. To Mecha, we will recollect each Kasi. Hashem said, I'll take you from Yad. We should see the Gilead, the Urim Vatumi, Mamish Papasta. And the Christian Mishpat, there was a Korean god inside, the, inside the, the sanctuary. And he used to wear the Christian Mishpat, uh, <coughs> only in the sanctuary. When he went into the Christian Mishpat, he didn't even wear the Christian Mishpat, he wore a simple white garment. And all of them came to Hirotsen and take him from Yad. Mamish, and I even found Ato, Titabe, but that's the Atmos of Moshe Rabbein. The Atmos of the Rebbe, yeah, should bind us all together and bring us all together. Take him here now, Omer and Cain, you hear?